Hello, hello, and welcome back, YouTube. It's me, Kirks, your favorite rank one inter, and we are back with a tier list. And there's something really special in this video, and it's going to be surprising for many of you, and you're going to love it, because if you love skins, there's just no way you're not gonna love this corporation. Anyways, let's start with the tier list. So for the Baron lane, nothing much has changed. The changes to Viego don't really matter at all. The champion is still unbelievably unbalanced if played well. Trinity is still a menace with infinite sustain, but if there's one thing that has changed, it's Gragas. And I want to make notice or want to talk about two different things when it comes to Gragas in the Baron lane. Gragas has received multiple buffs this patch, direct ones and indirect ones. With the power of the newly buffed Rod of Ages, as well as the buffs to his second ability and his passive, he becomes a really big menace in the Baron lane. For the tank build, you do not really need Rod of ages, but you can go into it if you truly want to. Nonetheless, Gragas in the Baron Lane has become so much better compared to before. But if there's one pick I'm not quite certain about, it's going to be Cannon in the Baron Lane. The buffs to Cannon have been relatively huge, but I don't really think they're going to make him such a broken Baron Laner, but I don't believe it's going to be enough to put him into the S tier category. Given his design and the itemization, he still struggles severely dealing with bruiser champions that go for Mercury Treads and for example Heartsteal or any tanky itemization. He simply can't kill them and has to go for team fights and hope they work out. For the tank department, not much has changed. All of these champions are still horrendously broken if played well, so do yourself a favor and pick any of these champions. And now before we move over to the jungle tier list, are you tired of actually overpaying for skins in League of Legends or Wild Rift? Then you have to just check this one out because I've partnered up with a dream for you to give you guys massive discounts. Say goodbye to overpriced skins and say hello to your new favorite skin. And before I forget, use the discount code KIRKS10 to save 10%. Now jump via the discount link in the description below and enjoy your cheapest yet biggest shopping spree ever. And with all that said and done, we now move over to the jungle tier list. Here we have Xin Zhao as the pick of the patch after Viego has gotten a slight nerf. But in all honesty, you can put all these champions in the hyper broken tier category. Like for example, Hakram, Lee Sin, Viego, Talon, Master Yi. It doesn't really matter. Pick any champion, quite literally any champion of the S tier, and you'll be more than happy with the results. But if there's one thing that I want to talk about, or at least tackle, it's going to be Diana. I believe that the buffs to Diana are going to make her a better laner than they make her a jungler. I think in the jungle department she's still too slow early on to just be competitive and I think she takes too much time. Nonetheless, as a jungle you always get away with most of your things because people don't actively play against you because matchups don't really matter in the jungle because people don't play, but you're not going to get consistently ahead like on other champions for example in the S tier. But for laning I think the shielding in general and overall itemization choices will help you a lot more than it previously, right? So your champion is going to be better than before. Another thing I'm quite curious about is to see how Shivana will develop in the meta, how much this is going to change, because Shivana wasn't a bad champion. She was on the brink of breaching ST anyway, as a farming jungle, but yeah, it's just... We have to wait for it. As for Wukong, Wukong doesn't really need more damage, it's more about consistency because this kit currently, it's all about just one-shotting people. You just go full assassin Wukong and you either one-shot somebody or you don't snowball. And giving him more damage will maybe increase the likelihood of him snowballing, but in the end he will suffer from the same issue being a complete hit or flop champion. For the tank department, Volibear is still the absolute peak giga gamer up there and if you want to, you can even put Nautilus into the S carry tier, you can want to, if you, you can just do so if you want to, and all the other champions the SD are really high performing tank champions that are so insanely safe yet powerful. Like Dr. Mundo, Nunu, Amumu, Ramus, all of these picks, even Shen, can be absolutely crazy broken if you look at them at face value. They become so tanky, they have such high influence, they simply don't die and they're so annoying. So from my perspective, if you don't believe in your own ability to reliably carry, just pick any of these tank champions and you'll be absolutely happy with the performance you'll be able to showcase on these champions. They're super easy. So do yourself a favor and give them a shot. Now let's talk about the mid lane. So what do we have here? Not many changes are happening. We still have Aurelian Souls, the king of the mages here, closely followed by Vladimir and Twisted Fate. But an Annie can be an absolute force you have to reckon with because she can deal with all of these champions simply with the power of Hackslash and her ultimate. Zora requires you to be a very good player, like you need to play this champion very well. Lux is a lane neutralizer that sits back and throws spells out on cooldown if you get hit once you die. And Syndra is probably the weakest out of all of these champions because she is the most fragile with the highest cooldowns, which sounds very weird to me, to be honest. Another thing many people constantly complain about is Brand's low placement in the tier list. Okay, Brand 
Grant has a lot of damage, but there's a lot of easy ways to not get hit by this damage because he has very low range. It's also all about grouping. It's about the enemy making mistakes for Brand to shine compared to other champions who can simply force these plays and do not have to rely on the enemy's mistakes. Brand is also very fragile, but if there's one thing that Brand excels at is if the enemy is stupid, he's just gonna kill them. For example, if an enemy assassin jumps you and you full combo them, you kill them instantly because that's the one thing you should not do into a Brand. You should not just run into him and expect to kill him unless you just one shot him because if you fail you will die because brand's damage in these scenarios is insanely high do not get me wrong brand damage is super high especially in a hostile meta but from my perspective he's way too inconsistent to actually pull off games that he carries like he is not the champion that carries games because he's way too fragile and way too easily taken out and just way too easy to have counterplay against for the assassin here in the mid then we still have Kassen as the highest or highest rated champion here and i always keep on saying that Kassen, once he hits Boots of Mana, is going to one tap you. Which is the funny thing, because Aurelian Soul isn't the strongest in early to mid game unless you just let himself breathe fire into your face on cooldown and just really hits his critical mass later on. But Kassadin becomes an absolute monster starting level 5 and only gets better and better and better. But if there's one change, it's Diana being put up one tier, but Zed is not moving. Diana should be a lot better now with the extra added tankiness and more damage and lower cooldown, but Zed shouldn't really change too much. Because think about this he got a little bit more damage on his ultimate ability but a Zed truly only is a threat to you if he's snowballing. If a Zed ults you and hits every single spell, you are dead regardless. And these 5%, will they make the difference? In all honesty, do you think they will make the difference? Because I believe they will not. For the other tier, we have Jay still as the best pick available, but I've added one more cheesy pick. And I really do not like all of these cheese stuff, but with this happening, I just have to put him here because he's so good into people that don't understand what this champion does or just play mages and just want to chill. So, Cannon is an absolute demon when it comes to mid lane power cheese because this champion on level 5 one taps you. Contrary to the Baron lane issue that Karen has, Karen, <laughs> that Cannon has, he doesn't have the issue in the mid lane. The mid laners usually can't itemize into mercs and cannot really get tanky and therefore he just preys upon them. Press is old, he hits them with big hits and that's a massive issue for them. But keep in mind, Cannon mid lane is not a consistent pick and it's more of a cheese pick so please keep that one in mind. And with that we go over to the AD carry position. Lucian is the highest tier champion here and probably the strongest AD carry you can wish for when it comes to impact early on as well as later on with quick mobility, super high burst damage and all overall fun playstyle. But yeah, for the AD carry role, nothing much changes. Ezreal's still in the same spot, very good, but he really struggles to carry games. Even though like he deals 60k damage per game, he isn't a crit AD carry. He does a lot of poke damage, but he doesn't close out fights. So he still has the same issue, and we still don't have the first abilities reset on its own hit, which is a massive issue for the champion. All the other champions are in the same spot or remain in the same spot, but Misfortune is down in the gutters. This champion is so much worse than before, it is not even close. You just have to do yourself a favor and quickly mouth out the old passive against a new passive and realize this champion doesn't play like a DPS champion, it's a burst champion. After reducing her to an all centric champion like entirely and completely removing all the burst damage feels very, very bad. Other than this, everything else is pretty much the same. Now for the mage tier, we have Zix as the highest pick, as per usual, still the highest impact for free. Vyga is probably placed too high here, but it's still the dragon lane, so Vyga has a lot more value than, for example, in the mid lane. But yeah, all the other picks are roughly the same. Misfortune is a pretty decent mage in the bot lane when it comes to just dealing damage with the third ability. If there's something or someone you could move up one tier, it could potentially be Brand, but still, Brand suffers from the same issues as he suffers on mid lane, but usually it's easier on bot lane to secure kills and snowball, and therefore gain even more damage but yeah it's something to keep in mind if you want to play brand and you believe it's a good pick you can most definitely do so you will only get punished by people who play accordingly and otherwise you just get away with them for free now let's talk about support champions we have nautilus as the best support engaged champion and nothing really comes close all the other champions in the S tier are reasonably powerful, well, relatively equal in power, basically, but not really when it comes to Nautilus. But still, they're all very powerful in their own regard. Galio, Graga, still competitive picks, and Blitz and Singed, I don't know what you want to do with them. For the Protect tier, we still have Lulu, but she's mostly banned, so keep that one in mind. In solo queue, you can always pick Soraka, because people never really do well into her, because they don't understand how to deal with this champion. Braum is clinically underrated, Yumi still absolutely, well, stage 4, you know what I mean. And Janna is still Janna. Everything in the A tier is from my perspective just a lot worse and B tier is just big question mark. For the carry tier we have Karma as the most consistent pick, way more consistent than Pike. but if you're a Pyke 1 trick feel free to just lock this champion.
champion in. Also, I'm not including many champions in many roles that are like somewhat exotic because I want to save you guys a little bit from the craziness. I'm usually like doing myself, so there's no support J4, there's no misfortune support, etc, etc. I'll keep you safe. There's no craziness, like you don't see many AD carries in the Baron Lane tier list, even though they are thematically really good if you play well. But in a solo queue context with the people that play there, it's very unlikely that they'll perform well, so I'm rather saving you from them. And yeah, that basically is it for this patch. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Check out what I've said earlier if you want cheaper skins. Dream for you is your best place. Use Kirk's 10 and get everything for even cheaper. So yeah, we'll see each other again tomorrow. Bye bye. Take care.